What's up, Georgie? Who do we have on tonight? What's going on, Sam? We have Heroin Berg, and uh, we also have The Edge on the show, and we're going to be talking about communities, part two. Yes. Whose community? Your community. Let's go. <laughs> Show for independence all around, giving you a platform to spread your word all over town. Cast the craze is the place to promote to your fans with the dream of Medina and Sam the Crazy Man. Subscribe to our show and never miss an episode. It's time to get your mans, listen to us on the go. Updated every week, we never miss a day. Join the squad, come on in. It's time to cast the craze. If you are an independent, cast the craze. Making moves on your own, cast the craze. On your grind in the streets, cast the craze. Join the movement, catch the craze! Yeah, George, we did it again. Come on now, now you want to do it. Catch the craze. Welcome to Catch the Craze Podcast. I am your host with the most sad, the crazy man, Vera, and I am with... George, the dreamer, Medina. I'm in the dark. Don't know Damn. why I didn't pay for my lights. I'm, I'm, I'm a little dark myself. I'm greasy and dirty. I don't know what's going oh, on. That, you're just that way. You've always been that way. But, um, so? uh, no, I'm so dirty, greasy. I got to check what's going on with my Logitech camera because it's keeping me in the dark. Uh, it's, it's coming out dark. <laughs> And when I upgraded, your, your, your mic is going. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, there it goes. All right, so when I upgraded, you know, Apple makes you upgrade the iOS. And when I did that, it knocked out my um, Logitech G Hub, which lets me play with the uh, parameters for the cameras or whatever, all of the diagnostics, whatever you call it. Uh, so now I have to go back and try to find a, a downloaded a version that will work with this new iOS in order to fix the the lighting on that damn camera. It's, it's pissing me off. But anyway, what's going on, George? Nice. Uh, you know, you know, just uh, living. April 9th is the day, and this is Catch the Craze. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining us yet yes. again on another episode of Catch the Craze. And today we have a it's it's packed it's packed with stuff. We have two artists or two creators on the show. Two. Um, yeah, and we have you know obviously the topic of the day, and we also have a couple of new uh, segments. We have indie news, yeah, and indie news. we also have uh, the shameless plug, which will be debuting today both for the first time. Yes. So that's fun. That's yes. fun. Yes, that's that is fun. Um, you know, it's funny the shameless plug. I gotta remember which one that one's for. <laughs> oh yeah, it's uh yeah, it's uh yeah. Uh here. I'll type it in the private chat that we have on the side here. Uh, who, who that? Is, is that, that our boy Johnny? Johnny? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 there it is, there it is. Uh, um yeah, it'll be a big surprise at the end there. You got it, you see it? No, I'm not in the chat. Uh I don't oh, I don't see okay. it. No, you gotta send it's me a text. Oh, okay. You got, okay. You got text um Anyway, yeah, yeah, no, I'll text it over. So, um, yeah, so that's going on today. Um, and also, well, I'll leave that for indie news. But at the end of the month, don't forget that uh, the Crazies are coming back for the third issue of Catch the Crazies. And for everybody who received their second issues, please let us know what you thought. Um, but part three is coming out at the end of April. April 29th will be the... Uh, start of the launch of the kickstarter for issue three so make sure you are following the uh, launch page you can follow us on instagram and you can get the launch page link right. from there sorry oh oh jesus <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness uh, oh yes. it's for joe Yes. Yes. Okay, follow, I got it. follow us uh, <laughs> on official <laughs> official IG page <laughs> of the crazies for yes. more information. For Herb, and everything like that. Herb, come on, Herb, you're yeah, killing me. There's, there's a lot going on here. There's a lot going, a lot on, lot here. going on here. We jumped. The thing is, we jumped from one show to the other. So we just finished recording a very good show uh, that will 
air at the end of this month. Yes. So you definitely want to check that out because yes. on April 30th, we have Russ Leach on the show. So you want to check that out. He's very good. Um, very good interview with him. We just finished that, and then we're jumping on to another platform to record this show. <laughs> so everything's got to be crazy, 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 crazy. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I guess this is a good time to plug in the news. Yeah, let's do it. In other news... <laughs> We've had a success. <laughs> that sounds official. Bro. I know, right? In other news, um, <laughs> uh, so we're getting ready. Um, the Forbidden Indiegogo is off to the printers, and so uh, and we're excited about that. As soon as we get it back, um, we'll be putting them in the mail and getting them to you. So that's exciting. Yes, yes, and thank you everybody for the support, the love. Um, that was that was quite <laughs> quite a journey. The uh, Forbidden Journey on Indiegogo. Yeah. So, yeah. No, thanks, everybody, for the support, the love. We really, really appreciate it. Can't wait to get those out yes. and for you guys to read them. It'll be – it's gonna, it's great. It looks great. It looks great. Yes. It, it gets a lot of static from your mic. Yeah, what's going on with that? I don't know if it's next to your phone. Is the wire next to your phone? Nah. Oh. It's, uh, it's StreamYard. That's what it is. Yes. <laughs> I was like, it's like you sound like a, a DJ scratching. Uh, so, so, uh, uh, so it's been busy. It's been a busy time. Uh, we're getting ready to launch Cast the Crazies um, uh, at the end of the month. So that's coming in a couple of weeks. Uh, issue number three. So be, join us for the live show. So on the live show, we're going to send an invite to everybody who's backed us on issues one and two. Because we want to have a discussion on the books and what do you think is going to happen in issue three. So what do you think is going to happen? You know, can you, are you able to determine the next, who's coming, what's going to happen to Sam and George, any of that stuff. Who, we want to know about your favorite characters. What do you like about the book? So it's an open invite. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before you continue. Uh-oh. Which live show? For the cast of crazies. Uh, launch for the Kickstarter the launch at the end of the week. No, the one at the end of the month. The the launch would have already happened. No, this is April ninth. <laughs> yeah, this well, show is April ninth. Yeah, but the next live show is after the launch. No, we're gonna launch live. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Work. <laughs> gotcha, because I'm like I'm like yo, what are we doing? No, you know we we know the new the new standard is we always go live for the launch. The new standard, baby. We're setting standards. Yes. So we went live for two means, launches for Cast of Crazies number two and Forbidden number one zero. We did a live launch on the day we launched so, the campaign. All right. So if you guys are not doing anything on Thursday the 29th, 20, we will be live. Yes. Thursday the 29th, we're going to be live. Um, and that's what I'm talking about here. <laughs> Let's give them something to talk about. Um, so yes, okay. we'll, we'll be live, but it's going to be an open invite to all of our backers. And when we took, we talk about the ones who returned and the new ones It's about 80 something backers combined total. And we're hoping that we get all of you, if not at least 50% of you to join us. We love to, we want to have a conversation. We'll have some raffles. It'll be a fun, fun night. Yeah, it'll be cool. Yeah, definitely. You want to join that April 29th. We're going live. We're going to be launching it, um, during the show. Yes. So that'll be good. And you definitely want to be one of the first uh, to pledge because we do have something special planned, which we talked about already. So I can tell you that we are going to have covers that are going to be hollow foil, gold, and silver. Yes. And these are going to be limited edition covers. There's only it's going to be limited to 100 copies of these things. So you definitely want to have one of the top ones, one of the first ones, because they're numbered from 1 to 100. So if you're the first backer, you're going to get one of 100 second two of 100 and so forth so you definitely want to join us live and make your pledges right then and there it's a very cool uh package that we have going on so it'll be good it'll be great <laughs> they'll probably say they'll probably say do these guys communicate <laughs> yeah we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't. i think we, don't. we got here is a failure talk, to communicate we talk every day but we don't communicate we don't communicate <laughs> c-o-m-unicate <laughs> Oh yeah. 
it's that is hilarious. It has, that, that's, that's why it works. That's why a relationship works. Speaking, Speaking of, of communicating, communicating, I think the reason why we haven't communicated is because we haven't taken our medicine. medicine. I, think I think it's time, time to get on meds. What do you think? Yeah, let's do it. It's time for your medicine. Comic Ooh, Book Communities know. Part Deuce. Part do. Part do. Yeah. You know what's cool about this, actually, is that I can hear that beat. I can actually hear it. I can't see it, but I can hear it. That's awesome. Oh, that's pretty fantastic. Fantastico. But, uh, nice. yeah. This, so this stemmed from a show you did a few weeks back about uh, communities and the importance of communities. And I figured let, 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 let's continue the conversation as far as communities and their importance. And I think that part of their importance is because this is our new way of networking. You know, before you used to get invited to a party and, you know, it was like an industry party and you would go in there and, you you know, you have a couple of drinks, you meet somebody at the bar, oh, what do you do? And you would be networking. Right. Now it's done behind a computer. Yep. It's crazy. Uh, this uh, this <laughs> anti-social distancing is driving me nuts. But, you know, the fact of the matter is, you keep leaning on your mic, the fact of the matter is, um, if we are confined in our homes, which leads to a lot of domestic issues, um, why not try to build a network? And so, which is why comic book communities are important, communities as a whole, for the right reasons. Yeah. Right? Because you're going to have, there's a, there's, there's a pro and con to being part of communities. Number one, you're going to have the culture vultures. You're going to have the rebel rousers, the ones who have nothing better to do but to try to poke holes in your game or target people for anything that's part of the uh, cancel culture, whatever it is. Um, but the upside of comic book communities, which we're, we're going to talk about here, is number one, you're building a network. You know, we've made a lot of great friends in this community, in this space. We've met, we made a, we made, what the hell's going on with your mic? I don't know, bro. Yeah, it's like, the, uh, Carry on. There's like a fight going on over there. You got beef? It's like, who do you, get the boys, get the boys. So, so, um, I think, you know, the, 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 so positives, networking, learning, education, um, resources, uh, advice, camaraderie, uh, and potentially building friendships. Negative. Um, not enough time, right? You're spread thin. Oh, my dog's acting up. You're spread thin. Um, uh, you become a like machine rather than an engagement machine, right? You know, I think sometimes you can spread yourself too far. Like, you know, I've joined a lot of communities and I find myself um, becoming a like robot and I have to remember, I'm dealing with humans. I'm not dealing with bots. So let me say something. Let me go, you know, acknowledge what they're doing. Let me start a conversation. Um, if anytime I post, it's always about something positive. I, you know, I post, it's because, you know, something about that person's post um, um, sparked some interest in me, you know, from me. Um, but I think the communities are very beneficial if you're trying to build something in this game yeah i think i think that and and we uh we spoke about this uh prior there's there's a lot of rules to some of these communities as well uh which you know when you are not obviously the uh the creator of the group you have to abide by right whether it's whether it's you can't post on a certain day you can only post on this day you can only so there are limitations to some of these communities which they're probably done for a reason and i'm thinking maybe it's because of the trolls right there are people who are just tr there to troll other people whether it's just that's to the say word. negative things <laughs> what you say it's like the troll under the bridge that's the word yeah, so they're there to to do it. So I guess that that's part of the whole thing where you it's it's a way to kind of limit that kind of back and forth, which I understand. I mean, I guess it can get a little little annoying, but you yeah, know, yeah. I mean, I think um, all right. There are certain communities where the moderator of the community are very um, obnoxious with um, with like 
giving you like I try to stay away from the 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 the, the communities where there's like three pages of rules. If you have enough time to do that, I'm not even going to. That means you're going to be such a stickler for every little thing. I can't. <laughs> I think being a part of a community should be a safe space. It should be a creative space. This is where you should collaborate, share ideas, promote each other, promote your stuff, have fun. Um, but you have these rules. And, you know, I remember I stopped posting on one because I posted twice in one day and I got this thing, stop spamming. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, all right, delete. And, and and so for me, it's like, all right, and I'm, and I'm Xing this off of my list. So if I ever see that, you know, the creator, whatever it is, I'm like, I don't even want anything to do with it. I was like, you know, and I think that's where it gets a little extreme. Um, yeah. You know, I believe it should be just a safe space, a fun space. You know, I, I, I joined a couple of communities where it says, hey, this is a place for you guys to have fun, blah, blah, blah. Let's, you know, let's be respectful and, and just and promote and share. No limitations, no nothing. It's just boom. That's where it should be like a park when you go to the park. Mm-hmm. Let's go play in the sandbox. Let's go on the, the monkey bars. Let's go. Let's go play on the swings, without the rules. You know what I mean? You know, and, and I think, yeah, we know there's danger on the swings. If you fall, you're gonna get hurt. I don't need you to tell me. Well, you can't swing, swing past the fence level. level. If, if you, you swing, swing that high, you, you, you can't, can't swing, swing in the park. park. You know what? Then I don't want to be in your park. park. I'm gonna go, go somewhere, somewhere else where I don't have you up my neck. neck. I think that's the uh, the the whole gist, gist of it. I think communities should be respectful. I think any of those trolls. Any of those um, negative nillies, they should not be anywhere near these communities um, because all they do is bring a bad taste to it. Yeah, but the thing is, how do you how do you keep those people out without the rules? You know what I mean? That's that's well, the I think you know, sword. I think it's simple. Keep it clean, be respectful, have fun. Yeah, boom. that's boom. If you don't understand that, something's seriously wrong with you. If you're yeah. gonna try to interpret it your own way, yeah. then then you have a malicious intent. From the beginning, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Hey, come on, cut it out. Yeah. So uh, my dog's acted up. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take him and yoke him. It's, like, uh, uh. <laughs> uh, it's the older one. Um, you know what I'm saying? So if you you're gonna go and try to manipulate, keep it clean, to try to you know um, swing it your way, you got you already have the wrong intention from the beginning. So you should be like, for instance, anybody that posts. The great thing about it is something that if I post something, if someone's putting anything negative, immediately I delete it. I just delete it. I, I don't even want it part of any of the comments because I don't want any of that stuff. You know, if you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. I'm not going on your site trashing you. Keep it moving. Let's yeah. just let's just create. It's comic and, and, books and have fun. And you know, you know what? And I'll be honest with you, I, I would respect it more if they sent me a private message on the side and said, "Hey." you know i have a problem with this and then we can talk about it one-on-one there's no reason to you know yeah. get your you know 15 minutes of fame yeah. on, on somebody's wall because you know you you want to be that guy you know or that or that woman or whatever yeah so i'm just gonna so, run to a commercial break and when we come back yes, i'm gonna throw my get my dog out the room uh, let's see we'll go back to coffee Yes. So sorry about that. I had to get the little guy out the room because he was yelling at me. Uh, hey, hey, you brought back two two of the um, theme songs in, in that one uh, in that one yeah. uh, what you call it commercial. I was like, wait a minute, because I, I can actually hear it. I was like, whoa. <laughs> yes. I remember that. Bop, bop, Those are throwbacks. Bop. Those are throwbacks. Bop, 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 bop. Yeah, I remember that. Oh wow. Yeah, it's crazy. Before we uh, graduated. <laughs> well, you know what? Pretty soon, the one that you that everybody's seeing now will be changed because I know how you roll. You'll be like, ah, I think I need something new. 
Nah, nah, I'm going to keep that one. That one's hot. I, I, every time I play that one, um, you know, because we do the Kickstarter shows. And so the Kickstarter shows don't have it. So whenever right. I play it, I get hyped again. Um, I, re- I really enjoy it. You know, that one's going to stay around for a little bit. Um, oh, that's true. That's true. They don't play on the on the Kickstarter shows. No, they don't. Um, Man. Because I, 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 I put started up. And oh, that yeah, hook, right. diff- and that hook started up, y'all, was a hook from one of my songs from back in the days, mm. my rap songs. That was the hook. Good old, good old rapping days. Yes, yes, yes. But yeah, as we were talking about with with regards to community, I just got to adjust this for a second. I want to see something. Because we are on StreamYard, and we're on um, OBS. So I'm just going to see something. Yes, oh, both well, our guests are in the waiting room, so I'm going to add them to the stream. Nice. Um... Here's one, and we're going to add the other, add to the stream, and now we're going to... Neil. What's up, guys? Hello, Nose. Hey, what's going on? What's going on? How are you doing? Good. All right, all right. Good, good. So this is a, uh, a, a very special show because you guys are working on two different properties. Yes. Right. Yep. So yeah, that's why I was confused at first. Um, you know, with the emails that wait, and I'm looking at the credits on the uh, on the books, and I'm like, mm, okay. So we're, we're we're talking to two different creators about two different properties. So what I want to uh, first introduce yourselves. Tell us who you are, um, and then we'll go from there. Marvin, you go first. All right. I'm Marvin Wen. I am the writer and creator of the Edge for Second Sight Publishing. Outstanding. Uh, I am Heroin Berg. Uh, I am the creator of the Heroin Berg comic book series and live action video series. Um, our common theme is we're both from Pittsburgh. We're very good friends and we have crossovers into each other's stuff. There's the link. There it is. That's Pittsburgh. what I'm talking about. Feel free. <laughs> That's awesome. We found the missing link. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So I just got this in the mail. So I haven't read it yet. Um, so I, I'm showing you your books. I got it in the mail. You can do a live dramatic reading on air. Yes, yes. Uh, I just got the books. Um, I will be looking at it. So, um, so we're going to go one at a time. Um, um, and first, George Medina is my co-host. What's going on, fellas? How's it going? Uh, George, okay. Not Jorge. Got it. Yeah, <laughs> either way, it doesn't matter. But uh, no, you guys. So you guys are are from Pittsburgh. Are you guys uh, Steelers fans, or are you into any of the uh, sports from out there in uh, Pittsburgh? Uh, I would I try to I try to ignore the sports in the city now because it's it's too encompassing to me. Uh huh. Just too much. <laughs> Too much I was it. actually I was actually in Pittsburgh a couple of years ago. I went to Heinz Field to, uh, to watch one of the games, so that was fun. That was a good time. But um, so tell us a little bit about about your I guess your journey through comics. Uh, where where did it begin? How did you guys get into uh, writing, creating, and, and all that fun stuff? I'll start with you, Marv. How did you how did you get into it? So I started reading comics in the '80s. Uh, mm-hmm. I gravitated to like uh, Avengers and X Men, and then in the '90s, you know, just keep keep it going there. And it was when the image image boom happened. So it's these guys taking their taking their stuff away and going somewhere else and doing it on their own. Their own. And I had to, I had to spark then, but I didn't really start creating until like ninety seven, ninety eight or so. Mm-hmm. So it just built from there. So we went from little pieces of uh, of nuggets and then built it up into something huge. So we didn't really finish uh, working on the edge until. Actually, 2012 was when we get really hit our stride on that book. I mean, I, it became something from it was something small and tiny, and just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So everything started from the 80s, moved into the 90s, and into, into now. Gotcha, gotcha. What, what about you, Harrenberg? Okay, yeah, our uh, origin is slightly older, not by much though. But uh, mm-hmm. I would say that our uh, uh, seminal period for comics was. Uh, right right around starting right around 79 80 okay so mm-hmm. uh we're talking bronze age material um one of our uh biggest uh, admired artists is uh another jorge george perez there you go. uh and yeah. uh big, big admirers of his teen Titans series i think that was the first run the judas contract that i collected in full uh as well as his wonder woman uh i uh you know, bought a lot of uh, Spider-Man around the time Black Cat came out. Bought a lot of Dazzler, uh, Cloak and Dagger. Um, 
what else? Uh, um, uh, the Dilates for Heroes series with uh, uh, Carmine and, and Marv, because uh, that was the first time you saw that uh, uh, readers could inter- could create their own characters and get them published. That was like a big inspiration. And uh, then the 80s uh, indie explosion, starting with uh, the Hernandez Bros, Love and Rockets, and going on to uh, Eclipse first, Kamiko, uh, reading like the Elementals, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I was solidly into comics through the 80s, then kind of dropped it because I got into underground music and couldn't afford to buy both vinyl LPs and comics. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but I paid attention and uh, got back into comics uh, in the mid 2000s uh, with the kind of, I guess, I guess we'd call it maybe the second image revolution you know, around the time that Saga and Sex Criminals were uh, happening. And from then on, kind of just caught up on everything, uh, you know, that would, had been happening in the 90s and 2000s. And, uh, yeah, today um, uh, some of my favorite books of the 2000s are Empowered uh, by Adam Warren and Invincible by Kirkman. Those are really good classic uh, superhero books. And uh, in the meantime, uh, uh, a lot, you know, I'm, you know, I'm sure Marvin is a, is a big movie buff, so you know he has this in common too. Uh, we were also influenced by pretty much 50 years of movies and TV shows. So, you know, everything from Adam West Batman to the latest CW uh, stuff like Star Girl or maybe The Boys. Yeah, yeah, it all goes in there. When we make our live videos, we have we have a live action video series and comics. That's awesome. Are you guys excited for that uh, new uh, mo- the new uh, Justice League movie coming out? The Snyder Cut, it, uh, yeah, four hours, man. Yeah, <laughs> dude, that's on Thursday. I think it comes out. It comes out Thursday. Yeah, four hours. <laughs> oh, on HBO God. Max. I'm stoked. I'm stoked. Yeah, yeah HBO Max. Yeah, wow. yeah. So we'll see how that is. We'll see how that is. But that's awesome. And and, and uh, so it sounds like um, you guys. Then how did you guys get together? How how did that happen? Um, you you want to tell that story? You got it. Oh, okay. Well, I don't remember the whole thing, but what I do remember is <laughs> is my discovering the edge at a local store. I think it was Phantom of the Attic. We support about four or five different LCSs. That's one of our favorites. And uh, I think I discovered the comic and kind of looked him up. And then we met like at a coffee house across from Phantom of the Attic. Yeah. And he started talking a lot. Then we started sharing tables at cons and, you know, talking about comics every day. And, uh, you know, eventually we're putting out our stuff and uh, uh, we have, a, you know, various crossover things uh, involved. Uh, Marvin is an actor now in my series. He plays a, a, he plays a villain and uh, uh, Marvin can, can talk about how our, our characters are kind of nominally crossing over in the two books. Yeah, yeah I get uh, it. Yeah, we, yeah, we just found uh, that we had a lot in common as far as... Uh, you know, the love of uh, fun and excitement and escapism that comics is all about. Yeah. Pittsburgh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Marvin? Yeah. So, I mean, but that's, that's, that's what he's saying is that like, the fun part of it and, and, the, and the action and the adventure that, it, that we're pulling out of these books. And we do have a, like a, a couple crossovers coming up so let me just tell you about what the edge is about yeah so it's a drug that gives powers but slowly drains you your life out of you as you use it Hmm. so the book starts with a character called revenant who was a uh, government agent who decides to go rogue and take the secrets of the edge with him so uh, he's the only one that knows that by using these powers um, is going to die because he wants to die so his former handler, Tartable, sends a strike team after him to shut him up. So we, we're playing with the not knowing who the hero, not knowing who the villain is, and dealing with these people who have no control over these abilities out in the world. So we have a few times where the characters lose control of their abilities, the abilities don't work, and uh, just goes on from there. So uh, currently we are working on issue 14. We're right in the middle of issue 14. Wow. And then four other things that encompass around that. So we're doing um, gaps between books. So we're going to do stories there. So like between issues four and five, there's going to be a gap. So we're going to fit that in with another book. And then we're going to do a few, a few solo books with um, some of the villainous characters. Uh, the book comes out uh, next next Wednesday in comic shop. So I'm hoping all the comic shops put their orders in because we, we got about 2,000 sales. Hmm. Right. So, I mean, but that, that's not enough for me. So it's it's double it for issue two, double it for issue three. Just keep trying to double it. And 
what we pro- what we're doing now is that we've got I built we built a list of all the stores around the world that uh, to take indie books. So we're contacting all the stores by email, by phone, by fax, by Pony Express, by, by Carrier Pigeon. <laughs> Who, how, how we can get to, the, to these people because, like, we we actually um, got in contact with stores in Ireland, in the UK, in Australia, in Egypt. So it's we're 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 trying to grow a, a global brand. Uh, and just having some fun with it. Yeah, no, it looks great, uh, Marvin. I was looking at the preview that you, that you sent us, and the artwork is amazing, man. I really, really love what you're doing with this book. Now, this is this is obviously the uh, issue one preview, and you're up to issue 14. Yes, we started working on issue 14. Actually, we, we were up to – so let me just say this, that before the pandemic hit, we were actually getting ready to re- release issue 10. Uh, mm-hmm through just through our own venture. So the pandemic hit, we were getting ready to do a release party at the new dimension that um, Herrenberg talked about. So we were all set. We, we had a whole thing planned. We had like a 300 people attending uh, because we were offering food. Whenever, you, whenever you're doenever you doing any kind of event, food, have food because there are uh, people from it. everywhere when there's food. I put, you put, I put it at the top of the flyer, there will be free food and not just, oh yeah, I'm coming out here, I'll be here. <laughs> Pizza. Yeah. Oh, we were we were having everything. We were doing pizza. We were doing sandwiches, wings. Nice. We were doing um, soda and and sure. water. I want to go. I want to go, Marvin. What's just happening? <laughs> All right. So yeah, we were. I mean, I I we were we were never going to spending at least three four hundred dollars on food just yeah. just to get people to and not just for us but into that store and just for just to have fun and just enjoy it. All right. Then our old COVID decided. Nah, you're not doing that. Mm-hmm. So we spent probably most of April trying to figure out what we wanted to do. And then we discovered um, Second Sight. So I ended up talking with their submission manager and he was like, just submit something, just submit it. So I submitted the book. A week later, they were like, yeah, you're on board. I mean, I don't think it took long for them to decide that they, they wanted the book. So, I mean, that was a good thing. And not only was joining them like a, a really good thing for us, but it opened the doors into Diamond. So, you know, once you're in Diamond, that that creaks the door even open further. So we, before that hit, we were, I was contacting stores and not getting a lot of replies. Right. So once the Diamond thing hit, the, like our interaction with stores went up 60%. Yeah. Marv, real quick, before you continue with the story, when you submitted your book, what did you submit to them? Was it just a preview that you emailed us or was it oh, like... It was a submission package. So it was a whole submission package. Okay. Yep, yep. So uh, pages, character information, uh, story plots, where I thought the story was going, if I had an ending in mind or not. Um, but I mean, that ending that we had in mind is gone now because mm-hmm. we we're we're enjoying it so much and we're getting such good feedback on it that I don't think I want I don't think I want to stop it. I want to see how far I can take it because eventually we're going to have to start knocking people off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So I mean, we're it just it's just having fun, and that that's all we're about. It's like having fun, uh, trying to get more people involved in in the book, having having to get their feedback on the book, and just talking to everybody about it. Because we don't we're not in the mode where we're going to cut anybody off and say that oh our book's not for you, our book's not for you. I mean, we want it to be for everybody. We want everyone to be able to enjoy this journey with us. So yeah. so are you in Diamond Previews? Yes, we are. We were in January previews for release. Well, originally the release was was February third. I mean, sorry, yeah, February third. March. I'm sorry, March third, and then it was moved to the tenth, to the seventeenth, and now it's officially the twenty fourth. So okay. let me ask you a question about your grassroots initiative. You know, yes. with Diamond having it in previews, what was the decision behind you saying I'm going to take that extra step and reach out to all of these entities, which is very time consuming. Uh, mm-hmm. um, yes. and try to build another layer of awareness right. for your product. So th- that goes with the Diamond catalog. So you, you, you've, you've seen this catalog. It's a phone book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So imagine trying to find um, John Smith in a, in a phone book. How many John Smiths are you going to find? That's right. So you, you can't really narrow it down to that one thing because most of the you're looking at the front of the book. It's Dark Horse, his image is in the front. Uh, one of the stores I talked to said that I'm really glad you reached out to me because I would have missed it. 
So you're thumbing through this book and you're, you're, you're looking for probably new number ones or you're looking for something that looks fresh and new and you're going to generally flip past something because you're, you're in a hurry. You're not really going to spend all your time trying to read through a phone book, trying to find that one book you might think is good. Right. So reaching out to these stores is, is going to be, have to be something you have to do for not only for, because this is second sites, first venture in, into diamond. So it's and also my first venture. So we have to build brand awareness for people. So you're reaching out, you're saying, Hey, um, here's a preview of this book. Check it out. Let me know. And it, like I said, the feedback was amazing. And what I did start doing was sending out promotional packages this week to stores that have um, that told me they were ordering the book. Gotcha, gotcha. And that's smart, man. That, that's that's how you got to do it. Because being in the book is not enough. You have to let them know that you're in the book. Right, <laughs> Otherwise, right. nobody's gonna nobody's gonna look through it. So right. So excellent. I consider like being in Diamond as being having getting an invite to the to the uh, March Madness. You got to yeah. invite. Right. But you still got to play the game. Just just getting there isn't enough. Now we got to go. We got to play for the championship. We got to be number one. That's right. No, no, good, good job, man. I, I think that's that's a great mentality to have. Uh, tell us a little bit about about yours, Herrenberg. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing, the videos, and, and and how that came about. Oh, sure, it's a whole saga, but no sports metaphors <laughs> for me here. Okay, so uh, so uh, basically, when I got back into uh, comics and uh, you know was watching superhero stuff all along, around 2017, I conceived of the idea of doing this live action video show. It's a TV show mm-hmm. that people download from our website. They download all over the world. We got fans in Italy, all, uh, Brazil, all over the place, awesome. and um, not large amounts. But you know, let's say uh, uh, the the episodes. Each episode's been downloaded maybe you know 80, 90 times. So um, essentially, uh, we started out this out as live action, and after uh, going to comic cons and hanging out with Marvin a lot, a lot decided to you know, reverse it into a comic book. Usually it's the other way around. The comic yeah. book becomes the show. This yeah. is the backwards. So uh, we have 19 episodes, people, you know, that come out every four months or so. People have been downloading and watching. Uh, and, uh, the, you know, there's a YouTube channel full of clips uh, uh, from those episodes. But now we're also doing a comic book. So like Marvin said, um, the whole thing with uh, COVID uh, was very interesting because around that time we were about to uh, – we were starting to market the first issue and we couldn't go to conventions and uh, neither could Marvin, of course. So how are we going to get this book out? We can't go to conventions and we're too small to really solicit diamond. We just, you know, we're too new. And, uh, you know, uh, and in any case, diamond shut down for weeks. Remember? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Here's what we did. Um, we got book number one and we started calling stores. All, all the stores we knew, we started in, uh, we, we were already stocked in about two dozen stores in West, Western PA, uh, all, pretty much almost all of them except for a handful. And then we're like, okay, well, let's uh, start to go farther afield. Ohio, Western New York, New Jersey, uh, Texas, Florida, places where there's large clusters of stores, especially those that either support indies or support the kind of like 80s good girl aesthetic that our book is about, kind of a George right. Perez feel, right? Mm-hmm. So... Uh, yeah, if you call 500 stores, five, 600 stores, you get about 120 of them to take your book. Uh, you chart, you know, you build them mostly through PayPal, sometimes through self-addressed stamped envelopes and yeah, you know, literally put it in the package and you send these books out and, uh, usually, uh, you get paid and usually they, uh, respond and they want number two. And so right now we have about 120 stores Wow. In North America and uh, a couple overseas that we're working on more. I just contacted uh, a bunch of stores in Colombia uh, just for the hell of it to see uh, uh, because I was talking to a, 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 an artist there, Carlos Granda, and he gave me some uh, contacts. Um, anyway, uh, but mostly in North America, uh, mostly in the United States and a handful in Canada, 120 stores. And we're just every, every week I'm trying to add three or four more stores that carry both number one and number two and going from there uh we're getting a lot of good responses and the way to spread the word is you know appearing on youtube getting articles and just uh pounding the pavement just like marvin says uh you got to play the game you got to do the work that's awesome no I, I love what you guys are doing this is amazing so now let me ask you something back when okay so back when we were like in the middle of the pandemic back like last year in like april and may you guys were calling these stores correct you guys were like trying to get in contact with them Yes. Now, how, what was the response back then? Because for a moment, it was scary for them because they didn't know if they were going to stay open. They didn't know what, what was going to happen. Were they receptive to the yes. books? 
Okay. Yes, and I, can I say why, Marvin? Yeah. I think maybe your answer might be similar, but you can add yeah. to it. So there was actually a period where they didn't have Marvel or DC books. Mm -hmm. We slid in there like a snake <laughs> and, hey, you got a couple open slots here and there, Heronberg Comics, you know, along with nice. all the other indies, the, the crowdfund indies, whatever, get, get your stuff in there. And even when that short window closed, you know, there were a lot of stores that were still a little bit dissatisfied with Lunar or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, or, or they, you know, they weren't getting the quantities they used to get, or Diamond was sending them damaged boxes, all this kind of stuff, right? So, yeah, we just kind of slid in there, and not every store said yes. You know, there's mm -hmm. some stores that only do the majors, but there's a lot of them that do indies. And you know what? The, the, mo the best indicator of... Uh, of someone who's interested is when you're able to reach the owner directly on the phone, the one who makes the decision, who's been an owner for a while. And when you say, Hey, our book looks like George Perez, our book looks like femme force, right? From the eighties. Yeah. That's still around. Femme force is still around. They know what that is, you know, because they're knowledgeable and they make the decisions. So, yeah. so yeah, um, we just kind of slid in there and uh, we're, we, we are still sliding. Go ahead, Marvin, add to that. <laughs> Right, so there was also uh, there was a, actually a Facebook group set up called Plan C. Oh yeah, talk yeah. about Plan C. Thanks. Plan C so distribution, that, right? Yes. So that was a a call to arms where there were retailers, creators, um, and a bunch of other people in, in a single group, and they were just like, "We need product." Right. And it it just was like a magnet almost for for a lot of in the community of people who had stuff readily able to send and people were purchasing stuff. They were like, all right, we need to get this in the store. We need it now. What are you guys charging for books? Are you gonna give a can we get a discount? And it just it just blossomed from, from there. So you're you're seeing a lot now where a lot of the Kickstarters now are showing having retail uh, options, and that mostly came from that Plan C group where it just spun up from there. Yeah, so uh, Jen King from the Comic Book yes. Shopping Network created that, right? Yes. And so within a few weeks, there was like 90 or 100 retailers on that list. Yeah. And that was the first uh, resource from which we drew, I think, both of us, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I remember she would have, like, videos of her kind of, like, talking to the people on, on you know, watching her live on the Facebook. And she's like, okay, yeah. I have this book here. And you'd have people bidding, like, yeah, I'll take four of those, or I'll take that one, I'll take mm -hmm. this one. I'll so that was pretty cool. Yeah, that, that's great that you guys got involved in that, because that, that was a great way to get a. Uh, that's actually out. the shopping network itself. Yeah, I think the there's about network. a dozen... There's, a, there's more than a dozen stores on that network. I would say half of them are brick and mortar and half of them are online. Yeah. But uh, the ones that are brick and mortar, especially um, not just her, but um, for example, uh, Jesse James in Arizona, big mm -hmm. dude that uh, really supported us heavily. And uh, several others in Florida, for example, there's a cluster there, especially around Orlando. So uh, yeah, that's the comic book shopping network kind of allied together with Plan C and uh, they have their own YouTube channel too. It's called the EXP now. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so yeah, kind of the seed that planted the uh, indie, uh, in hey. the indie madness for us. Yeah, I mean they say necessity is the the the, the mother of invention, right? right? So like, it's it's totally what what we needed, and you guys took full advantage of it, and I, and I love that. So now, as far as and I'll go to you more first, and then we'll go mm -hmm. go to Arenberg. Yeah. As far as your your ongoing series, because now it sounds like it's an ongoing. I mean, you have fourteen. You're you're working on issue fourteen. Yeah. Are you gonna? Are do you have any other properties that you're working on, or is the edge the property that you're that you're gonna continue working on, and, and where is it going? So uh, we're 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 gonna take it as far as far as we can take it. I mean, like I said, the feedback has been really good. So we want to like reward our 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 fans and customers with with more and a better product. Mm -hmm. So we're we're going back to back to back to back on a lot of stuff and trying to fill in some gaps in the story and give people what they want. So um, as we've been doing this, the, like I said, the Revenant character has, has popped almost to the top as one of the most popular characters in the books. And the one thing that people always make the mistake of doing to me is when a character becomes popular, they want to make him a good guy. They, you've done it like it's 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 always something that happens in, in in like professional wrestling where the guy starts getting cheered so now he's a good guy now, or you take Harley Quinn or the Juggernaut, and you want or Sabretooth you want to make them good guys now because people people like them. Uh, we're going to take the other approach and make him more of an asshole. Mm. So this character is <laughs> is devious. He's disgusting. He doesn't give a damn about anybody but himself. And we're making we're going to make him worse than that than he is mm. now. 
So we're going to give him we're going to give him a shot at a what we're going to do. It's going to be like four pages at a time, and it's just going to pop up probably as backups in the other in the book. And it's it's going to start off because we're doing we're going to do the trade, and we're going to do it in two different ways. So we're going to do a direct sales version and a Kickstarter version. Okay. So the Kickstarter version will contain those first four pages, and that'll be exclusive to that Kickstarter until that book it, until that is, is collected elsewhere. Um, for other things outside of that, I, I do have some things that could, that could spin out of the edge, but people have been asking me, are you doing anything else? So we are working on a time travel type sci-fi book, and we're, I'm going to do some horror stuff. And the first thing people say whenever I've been with horror, they said, don't do zombies. So it's not going to be zombies. <laughs> More likely it's going to be werewolves, but I, I'm not, I'm not, not really uh, set on what it is. It could be like an anthology where we have like a, uh, like a crypt keeper type character who who introduces the stories and then we go from there. But I'm trying to keep zombies out of it because people keep the zombie. They say the zombie things is, is done and it's oversaturated. So I don't I don't want to touch it. If I do, it has to be something fresh and different. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I hear that. What well, What about you, Harrenberg? Where Where's uh Where Where are the videos and where's the comic book going? Well, for, it's it, which is interesting to move away from zombies because Pittsburgh is kind of the zombie capital because of George Romero, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. like, a, you know, too much of a good thing. So speaking of the wrestling uh, heel versus face analogy, right? Um, uh, first of all, um, as far as the popularity of our various characters, so uh, the you know the characters in the book, uh, the main ones are are female. And they're both there's both heroes and villains, and then there are some who switch sides or pretend to be one or the other, but are actually uh, the flip, right? So I would maybe call those anti-heroines or spies, um, but uh, they're kind of categorized a little bit by Pittsburgh neighborhoods, uh, ethnicities, professions. Uh, so, for example, you would have uh, the uh, Chinese American heroine is a mechanical engineer at Carnegie Mellon University. And she has the powers that uh, combine Magneto and MacGyver <laughs> kind, of, kind of thing, right? So that kind of stuff. You know, we make a complex character. And the, the most popular ones are those who maybe people like their costumes the most or their backstories or, you know, just how uh, uh, beautiful they look. That's fine. So um, uh, in any case, uh, wait, what, was, what were we talking about? Oh, yeah, what, what else <laughs> am I doing? So first of all, it's already a video series. So between right. the comic books and the video series, we got our hands full going back and forth, making a live action episode every four months, making a comic book about every six months. So I really I don't think I want to create any completely different universes or concepts for at least two more years until, say, we get to the, to the middle of, uh, you know, done with it, uh, season number two on the videos and done with maybe six issues of the comics. Gotcha. At that point... Maybe the six issues can become a trade, number one, right? Uh, and then I can think of, I have some other concepts. In fact, I've been thinking of all these concepts all my life. But uh, I, should, I, should I tell you one of them real quick? Sure. Go for it. Okay. Uh, this has never been done. So uh, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, the, uh, the legend of the Celtic uh, uh, warrior princess Boudicca who fought the Romans to a standstill for many years. No. And that's been done a few times, but there's a, a, a unique legend of uh, uh, a, a, a Berber princess, a warrior princess from North Africa who fought the Islamic hordes to a standstill for several years and from Mor Morocco and Algeria. Her name is Kahina. And I found out about her because uh, um, uh, Tia Carrere played her in Relic Hunter in the early 2000s in that TV show. Oh, wow. So that was inspirational to me, and uh, it had never been done, never been done, except for that one episode of a TV show, never been, uh, um, you know, done in an action sense or in a comic book. So if there's one other thing I wanted to do after that, it would be this kind of a Kahina character, um, uh, you know, kind of a, a saddle riding a horse, kind of a North African Xena, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, otherwise than that, we're, we're pretty busy with uh, the, the ladies here. <laughs> yeah, no, that sounds great, man. That sounds great. Now, let me ask you guys a question. Do you guys always come as, 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 a, like as, a, as a package? Like, is it always Marvin and Heroin Comics, or do you guys do interviews separately? 
Well, we do both. Yeah, we okay. do interviews separately. Because uh, I'll, I'll say this, because I, I think you guys both have very interesting stories and you guys both have very interesting books. We would love to have you guys on separately so we can give you guys full, like the full half hour to, to talk about your stuff. Because you guys have so much stuff. I mean, you guys are doing so much stuff like that hardcore, you know, hitting up the stores. I definitely want to dive into more of that. But obviously, mm-hmm. you know, we, we, we're we just uh, constrained by time. But where can we find your stuff? So, other, I mean, obviously you're at 126 stores, Herrenberg, I, I believe, Marv, you're in the same. How, how where do we find you guys do you have websites how, how else can people you know just get in contact with you go for it marvin yeah i am at uh you can get me at the edgecomic.com that is my website that's uh currently in production that will lead you to our facebook page but on twitter i am at marvin Wynn, and on instagram i am at, um at the edge comic okay perfect what about you hamburg Okay, so our main thing is the website, heroinberg.com, H-E-R-O-I-N-E-B-U-R-G-H. Uh, it's a unique brand, .com. That's where you download the videos, and you can also purchase the comics with a one click of the button. They'll mail to your house. Or look at the list of uh, stores on the website and go to your local store if there's one near you. Um, in addition to the main website, uh, it also will link to our Facebook, um, our DeviantArt, our Twitter and uh, finally, our YouTube channel, which has, like I said, hundreds of clips, outtakes, uh, character intros, trailers. And we also, Marvin and I, have a series called Comicsburg on that, which nice. uh, profiles, just like we're doing here, it profiles Pittsburgh creators and, and stores. So everything is under Heroinberg, uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, DeviantArt, YouTube, and the website. Love it. Love it. You guys are doing great things, man. Keep up the good work. I love this. Absolutely, and uh, we definitely want to schedule um, individual interviews um, to really deep dive into your individual properties. Um, okay. You know, uh, I love what each of you are doing. We yeah. have a lot of questions, um, <laughs> so for, many questions. for you guys, um, and we always love it when, when people are taking their own destinies into their own hands and they're being creative with what they do. So that's pretty fantastic. So uh, we thank you for being on the show, and um, we Thanks. look forward to having you guys back. You got it, brother. Uh, sure. So oh, man, we're back. On. We are back. And, um, you know, again, we had uh, two uh, individual creators who are collaborating on a, a bunch of things, but they're individually. I got to move this thing. I got this link going on here. Um <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I love, I mean, it, it brought me back to like the days when we were, you know, calling, you know, these uh, comic book companies, hey, we got a book and trying to get it in. The That's hustle. You got into Midtown Comics. Remember the, Midtown Comics? The hustle's real. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and, I, and, I, and I love that. That's why, you know, that's why what we need to have them back individually because, they, yeah. you know, because one um, has video production, a comic book, cosplay, a um, whole lot going on. Another yeah. one um, has, you know, 14 issues in the pipeline as an independent, <laughs> and he's taking the time to call people around the globe. Overseas. Like, it's like, yeah, you, you need books out there? So, Dude, yeah, so there's just me. so much that we can definitely deep dive into, but with two people on and, you know, only half hour, which is what we allot, it's tough. So yes, we definitely want him back. Yeah, we definitely want him back. It was a really good show, a really interesting show. Um uh, but thank you guys for um, being on Cast of Craze. And, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Shall we debut the uh, our new segment, the Shameless Plug? Yeah, Let's Shameless do this. Plug. You've been plugged. All right. All right. That cracks so, me up. So, so who, who is this cat that's been shameless plugged? Shameless Plug. So, so let me just, the Shameless Plug was a concept about you know where we just want to just give a little spotlight to like independent creators and not that we don't do this throughout the show but this was just even one more one more uh plug at these uh creators joe holly i've known joe holly for a few years now he actually drew the shameless plug that's he's the artist of the shameless plug so thank you very much joe joe's got a book called pretty he also has a book called The Timberwolves. So check that out. Pretty was actually a short story that he put into one of the anthologies that we created called Cryptic. And it's a silent, it's a silent uh, uh, story. There's, there are no words. It's all just his images on a page about this serial killer called Pretty. Nice. There's a lot more to him. 
which he's developed and now he's created his own comic book and he's got three issues of the book already done. There's also three issues of, of uh, Timberwolves and I believe he's planning a crossover between his two properties. So he's got a few things going on, but thank you very much, Joe, for doing that on the on the shameless plug. And Joe Holly, you've been plugged, player. You've been plugged, sucker. Uh, so, uh, yeah. He's also wait. He's also doing. A, uh, he also did a piece for uh, for Forbidden. Well, we'll, we'll see. Hopefully, we, yeah, yeah. We, we shall. We shall see. Um, but yes, yes. So you know, again, like we said in the earlier in the show, Forbidden is at the printers now. So uh, as soon as we get it, we'll be packing it up and shipping it out to you. Um, yep. So thank you for supporting Forbidden. Um, in a couple of weeks. We, um, we launched Cast of Crazies, part three. three. Part three. three. Uh, part four is already in production, and we're launching mm-hmm. part three. Crazy! Um, <laughs> uh, uh, um, let's see. We're going to go live on the 29th to launch, and uh, we're going on the 29th on the live show. We're inviting every single backer for oh, Cast of Crazies oh. to come on, and let's talk about your favorite characters. What do you like about the story? What do you think is going to happen in part three? We love to build some excitement, and we hope to have a monthly book club. Um, so that's the goal, you know, that, uh, you know, and, uh, art contests and I'm putting it out here. Um, we're going to have a contest, you know, we did it last time and La- Daffy Lee's got the variant cover. And, uh, so if you want, if you're an artist, you've never been published, um, here's your chance to get published, right? So do a, 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 your, your best version of cast the crazies, your best versions of cast the crazies, right? Give it your all. And uh, for an opportunity to become a, a get a variant cover, and the winner um, that is selected, you'll get ten copies for yourself. It'll be published, and you'll get full credits, and you'll get on to catch the craze, and we'll interview interview you, and you get a, you get it plugged in the book as well. So uh, a lot of good stuff. So here's your opportunity to show us your best um, rendition of the crazies. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes. Yeah. So. Get ready. The crazies yes. are coming again. Never so. met a girl who makes me feel the way that you do. It's all right. All right. Go, all get, right. Ready. That, that, get, that, ready. That, uh, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. That, wine, that right. wine's kicking in, baby. Oh, I love me some vino. <laughs> this is vino comprero. Wow. Trempanillo right, well. crianza. <laughs> hmm, interesting very very interesting yeah, yes. um, yeah no that's good make sure you subscribe to the channel guys make sure you yes. subscribe to the channel tell your friends make about the channel sure uh, yes hit like hit that subscribe button comment. give us a thumbs up that's Let's right get that audio and, and tune in next week where we're going to have David Whalen on the show yes. so he'll be on the show will aliens do my homework will aliens that's do it. my homework and, that's right. and if you want to Promote your book. You have a Indiegogo campaign. You have a Kickstarter campaign. You have a book that's gonna hit uh, that just hit previews, and you want to promote it um, and get it out there. Well, here's our rate card, and for a thirty second spot, you send us a commercial for thirty seconds, whether it's video or audio, audio with an image, for as low as ten dollars. You can sponsor an episode of Cast the Craze. Simple as that. So all you have to do is uh, hit us up at. Um, guest at castacraze.com hit the link below it'll take you to the website you select which you know how many episodes you want to sponsor you pay to play and then we'll let the world know what's going on in your house that's right. That's right. Big shout out to Sin Eater who was our sponsor last month they they they, uh, they had it kickstarted going and it was very successful very successful it works it works Mm -hmm. guys thank you for stopping we'll see you. you next week I'm Sam the Crazy Man Vera. I'm George the Dreamer Medina. This is Vino Paramillo. And we are. <laughs> 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 it's just easy kids. That's not. Crazy. Acquiesce. Now I was talking about my friend Acquiesce. I met him the other Say my name. Say my name. Right? <laughs> <laughs> this is what you were thinking? Oh, oh my God. Yeah, he was grabbing. He said, I'm the. You're listening to Catch the Craze. 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 You are listening to Catch the Craze. Um, this is Craze. You're listening to Catch the Craze. <laughs> 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 <laughs>